Hi, hello, one I come and welcome back to at another episode on your favorite Little Sla YouTube channel. So today in this video, we are going to see how to add thing time in the true client script because like we all know uh, to emulate the real world scenario, we'll have to implement the thing time and also thing time helps us to um, manage the throughput, which is the number of hits so we can uh, use in both the ways uh, again pacing also plays another role but still think time helps us to emulate the real world scenario and uh, there are like a lot of options uh, in uh, the think time because when it comes to the normal uh, web application script just writing lr underscore think time and adding this uh, time in seconds will uh, take us through the uh, think time but again uh, there is uh, only one option like in in the web application if we enter the number it is just only uh, in the seconds but in the true client script we can even uh, give the time duration in terms of milliseconds or even in seconds so we'll see how does it excite us in terms of introducing the think times and also uh, we'll see other options as well and this will video will definitely help you while you are uh, creating and executing your true client script. So before we move on to this video, this is me, Asan Shanmugam. I welcome you all to our Little Sly YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, give a thumbs up if you like the video and share the video with your friends. And don't forget to join my channel for more quality content like this. So firstly, uh, yep, so this is the script which I have created. I mean, this is the script which I have demoed uh, you on my previous video where we were parameterizing the values, the username and password, and even the loan amount. So if you haven't watched the video, please do check my playlist and you can find the video. That's my second day video and today is my third day video. And in fact, I have to tell you that one of that is one of the question uh, which is asking about correlation. Yes, we are going to discuss about correlation, but this script is not the right script for demoing you the correlation. There is an option to do it, but still, I'm going to show it in you in a different video, but not in this one because this one uh, is not about correlation. This is more about the true client scripting. And like I told you, uh, the correlation part works in a different way, uh, which true client does supports with the help of JavaScript. So I, I will explain you in another video. But for now, we are going to see about the think time. So let me click on the develop script so to see the script which we created earlier. So every time when we click the develop script, we used to get the uh, execution window and the script window. Yep, so here I have the execution, the script window, and then here we have the execution window. So yeah, uh, to add the thing time, what we have to do, so we have like multiple steps, multiple transactions, and before I, in it, every time I uh, add any changes, or I add, make any changes, I used to, do a quick replay so let me do a quick replay and make sure that everything works fine so now it is executing i mean the script is executing and just to make sure that everything works fine because after we make any changes we are not sure about whether the changes had broken the script or whether the existing script has broken the script so it's always better to do a smoke test before you make any changes and yep everything works fine so far it looks good yep the loan amount parameterization which we did so we use we introduced a random number so that will emulate a real world scenario of trying different numbers and that will create a valid load to your server so yeah now the testing has been uh, the smoke test has been completed and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add the thing time because if you see on uh, the previous screen it like went in a matter of seconds so uh, to add the thing time click on this step and then under the flow, or sorry, under the functions, you have the weight. So weight, I'm going to just make it as favorite. So yeah, the weight is what we're going to add in between the transactions. So I'm going to add it in between each transaction. Let me add them. First, let me add them, and then I'll show you uh, how to customize the weight, the thing time, basically. So if you make it as favorite, you don't need to go inside the functions of the flow control or miscellaneous. I mean, the most frequently used uh, functions, you can favorite them so that you can get it in the uh, main window itself. And let me paste it after the click on element. And then click on 
loans link yep click on loans link and then and then the double click on amount text box um type loan amount and then the next one anyways is going to be a uh, press enter key so i'm going to add it after that press enter key okay let me uh, try keep it for now then i what i'll do is let me just copy this and select this one uh, select the previous transaction right click and click paste after so it will be added so you can even do that as well so for the last one i'm not going to add any thin time i'm just going to use the pacing part so now coming back to the uh, customization of the waiting time so by default we used to get a waiting time of three seconds so if you see if you click on the step you can see the end event so uh, for now this is being selected as automatic action completed but we can actually use the action completed as the end event so that any action that you do uh, in terms of navigation for this example so in terms of navigation if everything is getting completed only then it moves to the next step so we can choose the action completed or else we can use the step network completed okay uh, so let me explain you what all these uh, end events so take for example the action completed uh, so think of action completed as the moment when a specific user action in your script is finished for example in this one uh, in this example we have the advantage online banking navigation so once uh, so uh, it, the script actually completes the navigation and this event tells you that the navigation action is done so it's like saying okay we have finished this step and we can now move on to the next one now so we have to wait until the action completed and it tells that see uh, this action is completed so we can move to the next one so that is what the action completed basically tells you okay so when talking about the step network completed uh, we are referring to the time when all the network requests related to a particular step have wrapped up so for example in this scenario the advantage online backing navigation so in this example um, I, we have entered the url and then when we navigate to, the, uh, to that url it triggers a http request to load the page and this event which is the end event ensures that all those requests are complete before the script continues so it's a way of saying that all the necessary data is here and we are ready for the next action so that's the difference between the action completed and step network completed so when it comes to action completed we are telling that when it comes to action completed we're telling that we have finished this step and we can now move on to the next one and when it comes to step network completed we are telling that all the necessary data is here and we are ready for the next action so that's the difference between the action completed and step network completed and then moving on to the dom content loaded so this event happens when the page has been fully parsed and it is ready to be manipulated so in this scenario the advantage online banking.com so it's just to make sure that the page has been fully parsed and it is ready to be manipulated so it's like the moment when the structure of the page is set up but not all images or styles are loaded yet so it's a great time to run script that need to interact with the elements of the page without for uh, without waiting for everything to finish loading so that is the difference between the previous one and this dom content loaded so what we actually do is it's just like the structure of the page so usually we have this structure anytime anytime when we uh, design a page we first define the structure so that's what uh, this dom content lo loading is about it's about the moment when the structure of the page is set up but not all images something like the image here the house credit or uh, the, these images which we have in this page uh, are not loaded yet but it's a great time to run scripts that need to interact with the elements on the page without waiting for everything to finish loading. it's just you don't worry about the images or you just don't worry about the styles you just uh, enter the data and you just move on to the next step so it's, it's quite uh, a way that you can speed up your transactions that the dom content loaded and then when it comes to the document loaded the fourth one so this event is a bit more comprehensive because it indicates that the entire page including the 
images, the styles, the frames has finished loading. So think of it as the moment when everything on the page is fully ready to go. It's like saying the whole page is here and we can interact with it now. So that's the difference between the DOM content and the document. So the DOM will not worry about the images or the styles. It just worry about the structure of the page. Once it is loaded, it automatically uh, do its actions. But when it comes to the document loaded, it cares about everything, every single thing, the images, the styles, the frames. And once everything is loaded, it, it actually waits. It actually waits for everything to get loaded and then it will tell that the whole page is here and now we can interact with it now. Right? And then the next one, which is dialog opened. So when a dialog box pops up, like an alert or a confirmation window, that's when the dialog opened event is triggered. So this even tells you that uh, the script to pass and wait for the user to interact with the dialog. And it's like saying, hold on, we need to deal with this dialog before we can continue. And just imagine many of us have the scenario where uh, in, a, in the pop-up box, we used to enter some values. And most of the times that could not be captured uh, in in the web application protocol because they don't uh, normally deal with the network. So just imagine many of us have that issue. So you can use that actually. You can use this uh, true client to deal with that pop-up boxes because those pop-up boxes also will be recorded as part of your transaction and then you can try doing it. And then finally, the step synchronous network loader, the last option we have. So this is similar to step network completed, like the one which we previously had. But this is, uh, I mean, like, but it specifically focuses on synchronous requests, and it ensures that any synchronous network activities related to the step are completed before moving on. So it's a way of saying that let's make sure all the immediate requests are done before we proceed. So, uh, what is the one that you're going to choose? It depends. It depends on what you're going to uh, achieve. So it uh, depends on what you're going to be recommend. But for now, uh, the basic one which I normally try is the action completed or in some scenarios I use document loaded so that I get every single thing that's getting loaded and then I'll move on to the next page because in several scenarios, even our subscribers and any, any of us have got this question like uh, the page is not yet loaded, but it is moving on to the next action or the page is not yet loaded, but I'm getting the response time. So in this scenario, if you use the document loaded, it waits until you get the complete response time of that page and then you can move to the next one. So now the next part, moving to the arguments. Like I told you, uh, the interval is normally uh, three seconds, but I uh, I used to give like any time between like 20 to 30 seconds and you can use that, uh, you can just set it up uh, using a number directly. You can just give it as like 25 or you can even use parameters. So if I'm using parameter, let me just tell you what it, what do I do? So if, for example, if I just have 25, right click on it, re, uh, create new parameter for selection and it's going to be think time and yeah. So now I have my think time as the parameter. So I have 25 seconds for this particular transaction in case if I want to change it, I can very well change it in the parameter and don't need to worry about changing it in each and every single step. And the unit, like I told you in the beginning, uh, in the original web applications, we only have seconds, but here we have milliseconds as well. And also we have seconds. So we do have two options. One is milliseconds and the other one is seconds. And the think time, so do you want to enable it or do you want to disable it? Disable it? So for now, I'm going to just enable this. And then coming to the transaction, I don't have anything to say about here. So yeah, so two things we discussed. What are the steps? What is the end event for the waiting time? And what are all the arguments which you are going to use for? And you're going to parameterize your think time. So what we'll do is let's um, change it for all the transactions and let's make sure it's a complete script. So going to the arguments and then selecting the parameter. Uh, let me just change it here. I think we can even copy this here because we are in the parameter one. Yep, so it's default uh, thing here. And then moving on to the next one. Let's make it real quick. Go to the arguments, make the default. Arguments, make the thing time. Oh, sorry, I think I have to make the parameter here. And then again, the parameter here. Yep, so we did that. And then coming to the next one, go to the arguments, change it to parameter, change it to think time. And moving to the next one, go to the arguments, change it to parameter and change it to 
think time and then same way for the next scripts as well yep so now we have completed the think time setting so what i'll do is let me save this and let me go back uh, to the parameters here and let me just make a quick change so we don't need to wait all the time so let me just change it to five seconds and uh, by name it's going to be think time and uh, yep so i think we are done with this one let me save it and let's run this because it's always good to do a quick smoke test so let's go back to the uh, script window and let me do a quick replay yep and now we are in the first transaction and now we are in the think time part so if it goes something wrong then we can easily uh, fix it here since it's like five seconds of think time it's take a little bit of time what is that yep. now we are still in the think time part Looks like something has got wrong. Let me, let's fix it and then we'll move to the next one. Let me stop the scripting and then let's go to the step. Okay, I will make it to action completed. Then save it. Then let's do a quick replay again. Yep, the first thing went fine and then the next one Yep, the thing time and fine and then the username part clicking on it so yeah this is why i have i always advise you to do a quick smoke test whenever you make any changes so now everything goes fine the thing time is working fine and all the next steps are working fine with the five second of think time execution So yeah, the execution is completed. And uh, like I told you, we have seen how to add the think time. We see the end events all about. And then we saw about the arguments. We saw about the interval, how to parameterize it. And then we even saw the unit time of how to change it. So with that, I come to an end. And I definitely believe this video would be very useful to you. So until I meet you in my next video, it's bye-bye from us and Shanmugam and your favorite little slide YouTube channel. And take care and bye-bye.